Well, hey guys, welcome back to Tactical Review. Uh, so, this is kind of a third times the charm situation on this video. Uh, we uh, shot the video probably three months ago now. I actually had Cody and Perrin out here at the range with me. And uh, we ran into a situation where we, we needed to uh, get some more information. And I'll cover that here in just a little bit. Got that information, came back out with Cody to finish filming the episode, and um, when I went to edit it, I realized that I didn't hit record clear back on day one. So here we are again. Anyway, uh, as you've seen from the shooting montage, uh, we are comparing not these two firearms, but rather, we are comparing the folding adapters that the firearms have on them. Um, they both accomplish, as you can see, a very similar uh, function. They are made for folding firearms that have the recoil assembly inside of the receiver. So as you can see, there's no buffer tube pass-through. So neither of these solutions would function for a standard AR-15 platform. Uh, but they work very well for your AK platforms that have an M4 adapter. Uh, internally reciprocated uh, ARs such as this BRN-180 or such as the SIG MCX and PX, and the, the, the SIG Rattler, there we go. Um, they work well for something like the Scorpion Evo. Uh, the Draco NAC9, if you got the buffer tube adapter, like I said, anything uh, that has a buffer tube adapter where you can use an M4 uh, stock or, or pistol brace uh, for some adjustment on your length of pole. Anyway, so we had a lot of really good conversation and I'm sorry that we don't have all of that here today. Um, but as you can see, the U.S. machine gun offering here, which has its own video on the channel, is a very robust folding adapter. Locks in with this wedge shape on both the full open and full closed. And to open it and close it, you do have to lift it against that spring assembly right there. Comparing that to the SB Tactical BTFA, which is the buffer tube folding adapter. Uh, to unlock this one, it's very similar. You lift up against the spring, scratch that, you push down against the spring, and then it locks open on this latch mechanism. So, We've got a big, chunky boy right there. Now that looks good on the AK platform, but on an AR style platform, it would look a little out of place. And so that's why I wanted to get the SB Tactical. Really, really wanted to love this SB Tactical unit. As you can see, it still gives access to the QD point. It really matches well with the look of the M4 buffer tube, um, but what we ran into on day one of filming, and uh, you're going to see a, a high-res photo coming over right now, is that we had uh, some metal galling at the uh, at the assembly at the contact point that locks the buffer tube in the open position that. You can see it. When I first put this on here, it held perfectly tight like that. And so, I didn't want to just throw SB Tactical under the bus without reaching out to them first. And that's why we didn't just wrap this up on one day of filming, make our recommendations, and go on with life. I reached out to SB Tactical. I sent them the picture that I, I just showed you guys. And to their credit, 
Uh, they said they've never seen that kind of damage before, and they had a new unit shipping to me same day with a return package so that I could send them the defective unit so that they could take a look at it, see if it was a heat treat, see what the problem was. Well, fast forward, Cody and I come back out to the range to wrap everything up, and after I think it was just probably four deployments of this new adapter, well, as I said, it's already not holding in there. Um, I'll put a high-res photo of the damage that I'm seeing already on here, uh, on screen, but unfortunately, it comes down to a pretty simple wrap-up. I like the lower profile look of the SB Tactical. Once the SB Tactical is in the deployed position, I mean, it's, it's not going to come apart on you. It's not going to close. Um, I've put several hundred rounds downrange with the firearm locked open. There's no problem. There's no problem at all uh, with the thing trying to unlock. But the, there is a problem that it wants to wear against the one surface that's completely critical in the structure. The US machine gun, it's a big chunky block of metal, uh, but it does what it's supposed to, and it's not showing any undue signs of wear. And it's probably 25 to 30% cheaper. So really guys, that's what it comes down to. Of these two folding adapters, for my money, if I were to buy a, another one for a third firearm, <clears throat> I will be buying another US machine gun offering. Uh, SP Tactical, I love your pistol braces. Uh, you've got a lot of great products out there, but unfortunately, I'm going to have to tell my viewers to give this particular item a pass. Uh, I will go ahead and leave it on the firearm until it becomes unserviceable, uh, but at that point, I will either undo the folding mechanism on this particular firearm, or I will find a different solution. Guys, thanks for joining me out here today. Uh, I hope that you found this informative uh, just, uh, so to to actually fold a standard action AR-15 you will actually need a law tactical folder or one of the clones of it uh, they have a little bung in there that goes ahead and lets the buffer or lets the bolt carrier pass into the buffer tube when the folder is closed so in this position it would go ahead and allow the bolt carrier to go into the buffer tube uh, or you would need to pick up the dead foot arms solution uh, and the dead foot arms works completely differently we'll see about getting a picture and putting that up there um, but again these are also not the only ways to fold your internally reciprocated firearms um, there's any number of folding stocks and braces and whatnot for the AK platform. There's other offerings for a, uh, like the BRN-180. Uh, so if you'd like to see me test one of those, go ahead and let us know down in the comment section. And other than that, like I said, out of these two, pick up the U.S. machine gun offering, save yourself $40 or so, and uh, maybe you can find a round or two of ammo for 40 bucks. It is October of 2020, unfortunately. Guys, if you want to help support the channel, the easiest way to do so is go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell if you're watching on YouTube. If you'd like to go a step further, get yourself some channel merchandise over at the Teespring store. You get some shirts, you get some coffee cups, some stickers, whatever, and the channel gets a dollar or two to help support what we're doing here. And then finally, the gold standard of supporting any content creator, you can head over to the Patreon page or the Subscribestar page 
and you can support the channel directly using the link that you see on your screen or down in the description. Guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting the channel. And until next time, shoot straight, stay safe.